And so when was it, you said you got the Beach Boys from Billy Joel, but going back, when did you get hooked up with Billy Joel and how did that happen? Uh, I got hooked up with Billy. Uh, I was doing sessions and I was doing a session for Sesame Street and mm -hmm. I was doing an overdub, that tenor and soprano thing. And the day before, Doug Stegmeyer, the bass player, and Liberty DeVito, the drummer, had done the basic track at NYIT Studios <clears throat> here in Long Island. And the engineer was Doug Stegmeyer's brother. And he said, well, wow, my, my brother just joined Billy Joel and they're looking for a sax player that plays keyboards. You play keyboards. And I said, I do. But I didn't really know Billy other than the fact <clears throat> he had Piano Man out. <clears throat> I'm going to say, where am I going to fit into Piano Man? Well, anyway, I did the session. He called his brother. They came to see me play at a bar gig I was doing. Mm -hmm. And Billy asked me to join the band. Next thing I knew, I was playing New York State of Mind. And how long were you playing with him for that first stint? Because you were with him for a while, and then there was a pause, and then you came back, right? Yeah, I, I started with him in 1975. We did the Turnstiles record, you know, and about, uh, you know, 100 million records later, I left. <laughs> you know, it was probably the early 80s, I left. Then I came back in 2006. I came back for the Millennium Show. Mm -hmm. I played the Millennium Show mm -hmm. at the Garden. Then I came back in about 2006. Was the Millennium Show, excuse me, because I'm just, I'm not sure. Is that related to the 12 shows or is that a separate event? No, that was something. That was the 12 shows at, at uh, Madison Square Garden. That was something different. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. What is, that's an unbelievable thing. Because I remember there's another stadium, I can't remember the name, in Albany that the record, because I think Billy still holds the record for most sold out shows in, at MSG. And in Albany, like the week before or something crazy like that, he sold seven in a row there. The thing I wanted to ask is like, what is that like compared to just selling out shows on in different parts of the country? Is there is the audience that much different when you're playing the same stadium every single night? Uh, is it more challenging than than traveling? What was that experience like in compared to just doing a regular set of 12 shows, even if they're sold out just in different venues? You know something, you're a musician, you know this. Every gig is the same. You come to play with me at the jam, you want to play the best because you're as good as the last time you played, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a difference. We, Our audiences, Billy's audiences are huge. They love us. We love them. So you get... Uh, lost you. That, yeah, I know. That's, that's a call coming in. Uh, I don't you want to disconnect. It'll, it'll stop and I'll hold on. You can hear me though, right? Yeah, I can hear you. So the, uh, we'll, get the, we'll get the video back in a second. You're okay. The, uh, the thing that's most important is that you get on stage, regardless, here it comes back. You get on stage regardless where it is or how many shows. You're doing that show. You're in that moment. You give back. The show is over. Whether or not you get into the car and go to the airport and go to another gig, or you go back to the hotel and show up again at the same night, it's all the same. You know, They clear the house and there's different people. You know, uh, and, and every gig is uniquely as important as the last one, you know, and you're as good as the last time you played. So did you feel when you were playing, like, were there any shows where you were just like, especially you felt like you were especially on fire, whether it be the first one or the last one, because you're leaving oh, yeah. the city then? Oh, yeah. You, you know that feeling. You do a set, you know, when you get to this level, you know, you can't go Let's see, I don't want to be at a screen. You can't go <laughs> beneath that, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to always keep it there. If you're somewhere here, then you shouldn't be there. So mm -hmm. you're always going to be burning, and it's always going to be good. It better be, because that's just what it is. You mm -hmm. know, you, that's why how you got there, because you are that level. But uh, there are some shows that's just over the top, you know? Was it, so was it the, it was the exact show, same show every night, or are there any variations in between? No, we had we had this, uh, our set list with the Lords of Fifty Second Street. The hardest thing for me, Scotty, is that uh, is picking twenty two songs because we really? have hundreds. You know, so from, so in those twelve shows, it would vary from night to night. Yeah, Billy would decide on what he wanted to do. Yeah. Wow. How? What would you say? Like, in terms of because you're you're credited on six uh, Billy Joel albums. Uh, what out, out of those albums? And this is not including the uh, uh, greatest hits albums because you know that's same music but um what would you say out of those six records was the most musically challenging to record i have here it's turnstiles the stranger 52nd street glass houses songs in the attic and river of dreams um uh they first of all there was there was uh, it's it's and i want to be cautious how to say this it was, it was never a challenge 
um, it, we would, we loved what we did. Okay. We were a bunch of guys from Long Island that had a lot of fun. The most interesting thing for me, was probably the first one. And if there was any challenge at all is because we cut, listen to this. We cut the basic tracks. <clears throat> Billy cut the basic tracks on 16 track. Big time. We went up to 24 track. Oh, geez. Okay. And then we, and is that you? That is this, my, there's a church right across the street. Okay. So every, every hour from 9 a.m. to like 8 p.m. they do a thing. It's usually not that annoying, but when I'm recording live, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> you gonna give us a church service? Okay, there you go. So that's my, I think it was a C, sounded like a C um, or a G <clears throat> or both. So <laughs> hey, you got uh, the whole, you got the whole harmonic scale. Right. So, so what, it, what had happened was, is that um, I, I joined them. Billy S had seen me play. So I went to ultrasonic studios to see them do this cut, cutting of, of uh, angry young man in the 16 track situation. Then he played me the basic track to New York state of mind and said, would you like to play in this? I went, yes, I would, but I didn't play it there. We then went to caribou ranch mm -hmm. out in Netherland, Colorado, which uh, Jimmy Gersio was managing the Beach Boys in Chicago and Elton. And so we joined all them and Billy and I did our parts there. So if there was a challenge, mm -hmm. here it was taking all these guys out of New York, putting them in, in uh, Colorado, in the mountains, you know, at this caribou ranch where it, the air was thin, we needed oxygen to breathe. So if there was a challenge, that might have been that, that with the challenge there. And that's where I played New York State of Mind. Gotcha. And when you're recording songs like that, are you putting any thought into saying like, okay, I need to play this differently than I would live? Is there a, a studio versus live mentality that you have? Or are you just playing just how it feels at that time? No, it's pretty much the same. And I keep in mind, and we had this talk the other day about studio and live. What, what, what recording was back in the day was actually a good live performance. Mm -hmm. So um, that'll, that'll go away in a second. Do you need me to mute you so you can take it? I'm on a Zoom call. You okay? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so live performance was, uh, what you captured in the studio because you only had 23 tracks, 24 was a, was a, a simply code. So you only had really had 24 tracks to do this, right? So you needed to be able to play live to capture this. So mm -hmm. was it really different? I didn't know too much difference between live and, and studio. You know, I channeled people like Michael Brecker, when I was thinking about playing scenes from an Italian restaurant, I was thinking about how he would approach it, you know, mm -hmm. and all my solos are basically one take.